Hello and welcome to BadgerCam. In this week's video I'm going to be building the Academy 170 second scale A10 Thunderbolt or as many of us will know it the Warthog an aircraft most commonly known for bursting tanks out of existence entirely built around the gun it carries. Anyway without further ado let's get this kit open. In the box you get some nice decals for building two versions of the plane three sets of spurs containing all the plastic bits in the standard grey we've all come to know and love and a few warning sheets reminding you not to eat any of the contents. Upon first looking at the spurs the detail looks nice, sharp and crisp and it has a lot of nice deep panel lines that should survive even my terrible painting later on. Looking at the instructions this should be a nice quick build though as it's only got 9 steps to it. The back of the instructions is a blurb about the plane and the standard black and white paint guide. Anyway, let's get on with building the kit. As per, the first thing it has to do is build the cockpit. This is very simple and impressionist, but it goes together easy. Like all cockpits, it needs to be painted before final installation, but there's not much scope to do anything amazing with this if I'm honest. Paint the sides grey, paint the seat brown, give it a quick wash and it's done. It's also at this stage that the kit kindly asks you to add some weight to the area behind the seat. I went down the clay route again, but again the amount of weight I added wasn't enough. Later I reopened this area again, a pattern is forming with these videos, and added some extra lead weight to fix the tail sitting. I weighed the lead this time, and the amount needed is about 28 grams or an ounce, making the nose of this model rather heavy. I guess though, in real life, the gun in this thing is monstrously heavy and it does dictate the entire layout of the plane. Anyway, with that done, there's just a few decals to add to give the cockpit area some much needed detail. And that's the first stage of the build done. With the cockpit done, it's onto the main fuselage. This bit's fairly simple to do, but some fine parts need a little bit of flash removing. This bit of the build's a little odd though, as the lower part of the cockpit is also the chin area of the plane. The two side bits fit together around this well, but it's a bit fiddly lining all three bits up. But once lined up, the pieces go together well, and with a little light squeezing and some sanding and trimming, no filler is needed. Moving on to the main wings, this is a nice simple and easy step. Everything here fits together well, just a little sand and tidy up of a few bits of flash to do here and there. I will say though, some of this Academy plastic feels really tough to get through compared to the ICM and Airfix plastic that I've been working with of lately. Not sure why they've done that, but it does actually make the undergarage pretty solid later on. Anyway, with the wings done, it's time to move on to the engines. A bit of gunmetal paint needs to be added to these parts before assembling as otherwise this area will be a bugger to paint later on. Make sure to paint the inside and outside of the jet nozzles as I misread the instructions here and only painted the inside. I found lining the jet nozzles up was a little bit tricky in this stage though as the post hasn't got enough support to sit upright of its own accord. But with a bit of prodding as the glue dries this is again fairly easy to fix. With the engines built, it's time to add them, along with the wings and horizontal stabilizers, to the main fuselage. All of these parts take a fair bit of push to fit in, but once they click into place, they all fit perfectly with no gaps. Now the kit's really starting to look like an A10. Next up on the menu is the forward undercarriage. As normal this bit's fiddly, but I will say that when it's dry it's rather solid and feels very much up to the task of holding a plane with all that added nose weight. The instructions were a bit vague on how to place the landing gear door here though. I added this as I felt it looked right, but who knows. Keeping up with the area theme, the kit now has you add a bunch of little details around the cockpit, 
make sure you check the alignment of the gun here as uh, there is an up and down side to it and it will look crooked if you don't put it on properly it should sit square to the overall look of the plane I opted to build the plane with the boarding ladders deployed but the hatch can simply be added closed if you don't want to show this Now the kit suggests painting more details around the cockpit, so I added the required matte black to this area before carrying on with the build. Moving on to the rear undercarriage to be added next. This goes on just like the forward undercarriage. It's fiddly to fit, but once it's dried, it's really nice and solid. This is where I had my mini disaster and realized I'd not added enough weight to the plane nose. As I said before, this is becoming a theme. I found though the best way to correct this was to remove the seat and post little off cuts of lead behind the cockpit area. With these added, just follow it up with some super glue to hold everything into place and re add the seat. No one will ever know. Anyway, upon fixing that, that completes the main build of the A10. Moving on to painting the bird. I'm going to ignore the paint guide as playing grey and lighter grey is pretty boring and I'm going to go with the USA's European camo theme. Conveniently, I actually have three of the paints needed to paint this, even if each one's a different brand. But what I'll be using to paint this is Vallejo Dark Green, Tamiya XF26 and Army Painter Dungeon Grey. This is a fairly eye-catching camo and one that's not normally seen on the A10, which seemed to have mostly stuck to its grey camo in the desert theatres that it's been working in of late. Anyway, following a guide on the tinter webs, I carefully marked out different camo shapes, starting with the USA dark green. I'm not going to be bothering with the un with an undercoat on this model, just because I think I can get away with it, and because I'll be sealing it all in with clear coat when done, so the paint will have a hard shell to it. Once marked out, it's just a case of building up the paint layer by layer. This is it midway through, it's starting to come together, I focused on the dark green more here though, the light green still needs three coats at this stage so uh, don't worry it will be finished. A few hours later though and it's mostly done, just needs a few touch ups to fix a few errors here and there. With the main painting stage done, it's time to add the decals to the model. I found the decals to be nicely detailed, but again for some reason I had trouble with the shark mouth. It really didn't seem to want to stick to the model. I added a thin layer of poly cement to mount the decal onto the model, but this isn't an ideal way to do it. However, once I got past this stage, all the other decals seemed to go on fine for some reason. Maybe it was just the big decals that the, the Academy have trouble with. Anyway. A little weathering later and this is the finished kit. All in all I enjoyed building this kit. It's well made and goes together well, with no parts causing major issues. It's got a lot of clean and crisp detail and it only has uh, minor flash and clean ups needed. My only small nitpick with this kit is the decals. I'm not sure whether the uh, issue is with Academy's larger decals or if the problem just rests with me and it's something I'm doing wrong. But though, for about a tenner you get what you pay for and you know you can't expect everything to be perfect. And for that price this kit is certainly worth the money. Anyway, that's it for this week's video. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, look after yourselves and have a good one. Goodbye.